His speech can be correct and his speech can be incorrect. But not so the Prophet ﷺ. For indeed the Prophet ﷺ spoke with wahi. He spoke with revelation. وَمَا يَنْتِقُ أَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوهَىٰ He spoke, the Prophet ﷺ never spoke from his desires. But rather he spoke with the revelation that was conveyed to him. So no doubt that the ulama are there that we refer back to them. And that we study with them. And we learn from them. And we take from where they took. And we take our fatawa from them. And we take from the greater of them. And the, and the most knowledgeable of them. And as for anyone who claims to be with the ulama and with the scholars, then you will not find that individual. If he is truly with the ulama, and if he is truly sticking to the way of the salaf, sticking to the way of the great imams of the past, and sticking to the way of the sahaba radiallahu anhum, such an individual will not oppose those fundamentals and those principles of the salaf. Such as for example, that we call to tawheed first and foremost, and that we abandon shirk, and we warn from shirk, that we call to the sunnah, we call to ittiba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and we abandon bid'ah, and we encourage with the sticking to the sunnah and the abandonment of bid'ah, that we invite the people to iman, and to the correct understanding of iman, and that which it, which it necessitates by way of belief and speech and action, and that we call for the increase in one's iman, by way of inviting people to the aqidah sahihah, and to speak with the truth, and to act upon that with their limbs, and by way of that their iman in and this is what we establish for the people, and this is what we call the people to, and that we call the people to the correct understanding of al-wala wal-bara, that they have love for the sake of Allah, that they have allegiance for the sake of Allah, and they establish enmity for the sake of Allah, that we love those who are upon the sunnah, and we hate those who are upon innovation. All of these are from the usul of Ahlul Sunnah, from the fundamentals of Ahlul Sunnah, that we are united upon these fundamentals, our love for the people of Sunnah, our love for the people of the correct Aqeedah, our love for the people who stick to the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and likewise our hatred for the people of Shirk and grave worship, and our hatred for the people of innovation, regardless of whether their innovation is Kufriya, whether their innovation is by way of disbelief, or whether their innovation is lesser than disbelief. That we hate Ahlul Bid'ah, from the first of them to the last of them, those who are the callers to innovation. As for the Awam, and as for the general folk amongst the people of innovation, then we call them to the truth, and we call them to the Sunnah, and we invite them to that which is correct. For indeed many of them may have fallen into innovation without even realizing. They may have a love for the Sunnah, but may not know the Sunnah. So they are not to be treated the same way as the callers to innovation. As for the callers to innovation, and the organizations of innovation, and those who establish their, not, uh, establish their religion upon innovation, and establish their conferences upon innovation, and they establish their websites upon innovation, then we warn against them, and we call against them, and we make tahdeer to the ummah against them, so that the people of truth, and the people of sincerity, and the people who do not know better, that they may be protected by from the, from the people of innovation. We don't join the ranks of the people of innovation. We don't join their ranks, and we don't sit alongside them, except to advise them. And that advice of them does not necessitate that we sit on the same platforms as them, and we sit beside them, and then we invite people to them. No, that this nasiha towards the callers to innovation is by way of writing, is by way of speaking to them, is by way of sending them cassettes, is by informing them, but not by joining their ranks, and not by sitting alongside them upon platforms, and in conferences, this is not from the way of the Sunnah. It has never been from the way of the Sunnah. And that's why you find that the usul of this deen, established in the books of Aqeedah, such as the such as Shar, Shar Sunnah of Imam al-Barbahari, or Sul Sunnah of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, or Sunnah of Abu Hatim al-Razi, and Abu Zura al-Razi, and Shar Sul Ahl Sunnah, Ittiqad Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah of Imam al-Alikai, and Kitab al-Shari'ah of Imam al-Ajuri, and other than them from the great works of the ulama that you do not find them except that they warn against Ahlul Bid'a and keeping away from the callers to Ahlul Bid'a. But as for the general folk from amongst those who, who, who engage in innovation not realizing, then we invite them with kindness and gentleness hoping to guide them to the truth. 
So let us not be deceived, my brothers and sisters, that we need to take knowledge from the correct individuals, those who establish these fundamental principles, those who believe in what we believe in, those who call to what we call to, meaning those who call to what Ahlul Sunnah call to, those who call to what the A'imma call to, those who call to that which Bin Ba'ad call to, that which Al-Albani call to, that which Ibn Uthaymin calls to, that which Sheikh Mubil called to, that which Abdurrahman ibn Sa'di called to, that which Imam al-Shawkani called to, that which Ibn Uthaymiyyah called to, that which Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab called to, that we call to whatever they call to, that which Ahmed called to, that which Malik called to, that which Shafi called to. So we call to that which they call to. And we do not, my brothers and sisters, compromise in that regard. That we don't allow compromising in that regard. That we call to what they call to, and that we take knowledge from those individuals, from those scholars, and those who stick to their way. Sheikh Al-Fawzan, he mentions, so it is upon the teachers and the educators to stick to the scholars, stick to the well-known and the trustworthy ones for knowledge and for correct aqidah. They should take knowledge from them to the extent that one has a connection and a chain of knowledge leading back to the Prophet wasallam. So they take knowledge which is beneficial and pure and clean from those trustworthy, reliable scholars so that they are upon basira and connected to the Prophet ﷺ through that chain of narration that takes them back to the sunnah of Allah's Messenger ﷺ. And from the du'at and from the educators are those who have a great deficiency. Those who claim that they have books and they have no need for ulama. You find people like this out there. And I'm sure many of you are listening in today have heard of these types of people. That they claim that they have books. And that is sufficient for them. Sheikh Al-Fawzan mentions that this is a grave mistake. The individual who says that my scholar is my book. And this leads to grave dangers. Because other than the book of Allah, and other than the sunnah of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is no book except that it will have errors. Some even contain poisonous ideas. And the newly educated teacher can in harmony benefit. So it is upon the newcomer in educating to understand and to learn and that terms and books are to be explained to him that he cannot take a book and claim that he is the one who understands the book just by reading a book he needs to study that book with an alim, with a scholar so that he can distinguish so that books are explained to him and the obscure matters are clarified for him and if knowledge was present and only taken from the books, then why did those who preceded us in knowledge, those who preceded us from the ulama, why did they travel vast distances, and encounter dangers, and spend long ter- long periods of time in pursuit of knowledge? Why did they do so? Except that they understood the importance of taking knowledge, the importance. And, we, and it is known that from the Sahaba, there were those individuals from the Sahaba, who would travel, like from a sahabi, who would travel for a singular hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he did not know, that he would travel for a whole month, just to hear one hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And likewise, if you look at Imam al-Bukhari, Imam al-Bukhari spent 46 years, in pursuit of the hadith, in which he gathered together, in, Sahih, in, in his Sahih al-Jami, or the book which is commonly known today as Sahih Bukhari. Over 46 years in traveling for ilm. 46 years in pursuit of knowledge. Over a thousand scholars that he took knowledge from. This is Imam al-Bukhari. Amir al-Mu'minin fil hadith. What about Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal? Who traveled from Iraq to Yemen and the Hijaz. And other than them, other than them from the lands. This is Ahmed ibn Hanbal. To take knowledge from the ulama. And also those who have traveled from the great Imam, such as Imam Shafi'i, and we mentioned Imam Bukhari, Abu Abdu, uh, and likewise Abu Zura al Razi, Abu Hatim al Razi, Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, all of these ulama, they used to travel in pursuit of knowledge. So much so 
that many of the Salaf they used to say that the one who did not travel to for knowledge, then he has no then he has no knowledge to impart. One needs to go out in pursuit of knowledge and seek that knowledge from those who are trustworthy, those from whom it is known that they are firm and steadfast upon the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Shaykh al fawzan he mentions that if ilm was taken just from the books, then these great Imams would have just sat 